to be here. How, how has it so, so far? Uh, it's been wonderful. It's over now. I, this is the last show, but uh, shows have been great. Uh, amazing sightseeing, great times with old friends and new friends. I, I love it. Free State. Free State. Free State when you're performing. How was that last festival? Oh, it was awesome. I love playing outside. Uh, I'd never been to that part of the world before. It's super beautiful. It was really awesome to play. I played during sunset. It, uh, it was great. I loved it. Saw some good other bands. A chance to listen to other acts, local acts. Uh, what do you think about the talent here in SA, in South Africa? Uh, what do I think about what? The talent. Oh, super talent. I've been I've been blown away today by who I've seen so far. Um, I met a lot of great bands this week. We were staying at a place called Piece of Eden together and kind of jamming. Uh, I wish I had more time here to to collaborate and play with people. I, I'm definitely gonna build in time to do that next time I'm here. You have a very strange process, process of making music. How would you describe your technique, your approach when you make music? It's strange. <laughs> well, from the two first projects, they were like experimental. Uh huh. Like, uh, was, why, why did you cover the, uh, the whole album? Like, oh, Ram. People, yeah, the Ram. <laughs> you know about this, yeah. <laughs> uh, by Paul McCartney, yes. Yeah. Why did I do that? Yeah. Like, usually people cover like one song. You, yeah, like, I know, yeah. Um. It was kind of an odd personal challenge that I wanted to undertake. Um, I'd just gotten a little bit of recording equipment. I had some time off the road. I'd been on tour a lot, and uh, I wanted to see if I could just record a whole record by myself. And ideally, I would have done my own, but I didn't have any songs written. So it was kind of like, I'm going to figure out how to make a record. I'm going to figure out how to play all the instruments that I don't know how to play yet just by doing it. And so I did it. And I never expected it to come out. Uh, but a, a few labels were interested, and it came out. So that's what happened. You're from Portland, Oregon, right? Yeah. It's like uh, the mecca of indie music. Like, why do like most artists chose to stay there? Mm. Well, it's changing there a lot, but I think at least you know, two decades, one decade ago, um, it was very cheap to live there, and a lot of artists came there because you could kind of work part-time and focus on making music the rest of the time, like any artistic city that goes that way. Um, but Portland was just kind of the right combination of location, price, um, being near California, maybe it had something to do with it being near Seattle, um, and it's just a very creative, community where people aren't afraid to be themselves. Um, like a lot of the U.S. right now, uh, housing prices are going up and artists are being forced out and it's really sad, so I feel like its status of being the mecca of indie music is maybe in jeopardy or or uh, needs to be updated, but it's still a great place to live that I love being in and there's amazing bands there. Um, and I hope that it continues to support the arts. In, in, in terms of collaboration, you've toured with a lot of different oh, bands. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, what you to do I your mean, own I guess album? Death Cab for Cutie is yeah. probably the biggest uh, project I've been involved with, and I, I'm a full time member now, so. Yeah, I guess other than them, I played with a guy named Ray LaMontagne for about a year. That uh, I don't know if he's popular here, he's very popular in the US. Great guy, great music. Um, but yeah, those are kind of the two ones that you would have heard of, I guess. <laughs> What's your top five albums of all time? My top five albums? Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I have to take a sip of this. <laughs> yeah. I should really have this like written down and ready to go. I can tell you my number one favorite album of all time. It's What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe Scary Monsters by David Bowie. Um, Rubber Soul by The Beatles. Man, that's tough. I'd, I'd have to like sit, really sit down to come up with the last two. <laughs> Let's talk about your album. Man. Your album, emotional freedom technique. Yeah, like a very personal feel to it. Like you did it alone. Yeah, and uh, in, in your own mind, like, you didn't have a chance to bounce ideas. How did that process like come about? Uh, well, it meant that it took a really long time to do because, like you just said, I didn't have anyone to bounce ideas off of. So it's in that situation, it's very hard to 
know if something's good or something's bad. Like, it can be annoying to be in a band and have people be like, no, that's no good. But it's it solves problems quickly or if you're unsure if something's working. So um, it, it took a really long time. I recorded a lot of songs that didn't make it onto the record, and I just wasn't sure what was working, what wasn't working. Entire songs would get recorded and re-recorded. I'd buy a new synthesizer and I'd replace all the synthesizer sounds with the new synthesizer. Uh, but ultimately, it was a very personal record and um, I'm glad I did it by myself for that reason because I feel like it's 100% an expression of myself and my emotional freedom, I guess, you know? Uh, it, it was a very hard album lyrically to, to put myself out there like that and uh, yeah, I kind of, in some ways, never expected anyone to hear it, and so I was surprised good, that it came out. Album. What's that? It's a very great album. Oh, thank right. you very much. <laughs> and what do you think of considering doing other covers, like album covers, or are you done with that? What's that? Will you consider doing other cover albums, or are you done with that process? You know, I already did another one, <laughs> <laughs> um, but... I did it like six years ago after I did the Ram record, and it's a cover of a record by a guy named Ted Lucas, um, who was a guy from Detroit in the 70s. And, he, and it's, I kind of cheated because it's only a six song album. He only made six songs in his whole lifetime. Wow. It's crazy. And they're the most beautiful, perfect songs. I'm going to check it out. I, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a link to Thanks. where you can find it. But he was a. Uh, you know how Motown had like a crew of session musicians, yeah, yeah. like the Wrecking Crew. Mm. So he was in that group, but his job—he wasn't the bass player, or the drummer. His job was to play like the psychedelic instruments, like sitars wow. and tablas and stuff. So he's on all those late '60s like psychedelic jam in, in the history of music. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then uh, in the mid '70s, he made one solo record, and it had six songs on one side, and the other side was just this weird instrumental guitar jam. Uh, but the six songs are like the six most perfect songs ever. And so I decided to challenge myself to see if I could record all of those in one sitting. So I did it all in like 24 hours. But I didn't put it out yet because I didn't want to be the guy that just does cover <laughs> albums one after another. So it's sitting there kind of waiting to be... When is it coming released. out? We're going to hear it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I might just put it online. I don't know. I, it's It'll probably in the next six to eight months or something. Yeah. I heard a new song when you're performing. Like, are you working on a new album? Or? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've got about sort of 50 baby songs started. You know, not, they're not all going to turn into something, but I don't solo project so with the with the band. Uh, it's another record of mine, uh, and I haven't decided yet whether to involve other people in it yet. I kind of want to, at least to do. I feel like it, the songs would benefit from having a real drummer and that kind of thing. It's a, it's a lot funkier and kind of, so far at least, it's kind of <laughs> talking heads mixed with Fela Kuti or something. I don't know. Oh, wow. um, so I, I just want it to be a weirder, darker, stranger sounding record. Wow, you, um, when, you, when you're starting making a, a new record or an album, do you think of a theme or a subject? Or that's just... the problem so far with this, is that it, I mean, it's not a problem. It just, I... I with emotional freedom technique, I spent years just like being like, I don't know what these songs are about. I don't know what this is. And once I kind of had, uh, wrote that first song, Do You Want Love, that kind of set the theme for the record. And all of a sudden, the rest of the songs came, came much more quickly. So I, I need a song like that that kind of sets the tone for what I want to say. I don't know if I want it to be about America right now or my... What, what's happened to me since I put out Emotion Freedom Technique? Anything like that? I, did, I don't, I don't know what the theme is yet. So, once I once I figure it out, it'll it'll come. I think. I think that's about it. Mm. Okay. Be. This is Dave Depper, and you're watching Music Space TV.